Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Paola Nasti. I'm a, an associate professor of Italian studies at uh, Northwestern University. And I'm here today with um, Professor Nicolò Maldina, whom I've invited uh, to discuss with me um, Paradiso 11. Um, I share with uh, Nicolò uh, a great interest in Dante's uh, religious culture. And um, I'm very excited to have him here today um, to discuss uh, Paradiso 11, which is um, my favorite canto, one of my favorite cantos of the comedy. Paradiso 11 uh, is one of the most iconic cantos of the comedy. Um, not least because it features uh, the story of the life of the most loved saint of uh, uh, medieval times, uh, St. Francis uh, of Assisi. Dante, the character, has met uh, Thomas Aquinas, uh, one of his ideal uh, teachers of philosophy and theology, in the previous canto in Paradiso 10, among the spirits of the wise who have appeared to the pilgrim uh, in the heaven of the sun. Here in Canto 11, the poet puts the story of his journey on a standby and initiates a pose that will last at least two cantos uh, to introduce the portrayals of the most significant saints of his times, not just Francis in Paradiso 11, but also Saint Dominic in Paradiso 12. In the 13th century, these holy men had founded what would become the most influential and powerful mendicant orders of the medieval church, the Franciscan and the Dominican order. Early in our canto, Dante proclaims that together with St. Dominic, St. Francis had been sent by God to rekindle the love relationship between Christ, who's described as the beloved, il diletto, and the church, uh, which is described like in the Inferno, 19 as a bride. Um, so as we shall see, I think uh, later, you know, this the, the love metaphor is central to, uh, to the canto as a whole, uh, but certainly um, this uh, introduction to France, to the mission of Francis as a reformist um, highlights the ecclesiological concern of uh, uh, Paradiso 11. Um, so although this is uh, often celebrated as a spiritual canto, as an agiographical canto that obviously celebrates the perfect life of, uh, um, of Francis, um, I do believe that there is, you know, a political uh, flair um, uh, uh, that, uh, you know, runs throughout the canto. Um, now, how do you think Dante, do you think this is uh, so? And how do you think, you know, the canto develops this political, uh, ecclesiological uh, strain? I do totally agree with you, Paola, and I go, would go even further by saying that uh, probably this is one of the essential features of this canto, although it is not self-evident in the canto itself. Uh, I mean uh, that uh, the ecclesiological concern, uh, concerns are clearly there, but are there only if we locate the canto within the comedy as a whole, whereas if we stick to the, the sort of importance of St. Francis on the one hand and on the other on the canto, the uh, Paradiso 11 itself, uh, we, we, we tend to provide a sort of a geographical and uh, entirely spiritual image of uh, Dante's St. Francis, Dante's account of St. Francis' life. On the other hand, if, if we uh, locate this canto as I think we should do within a, a sort of broader discourse on, on church developed by Dante throughout the Commedia, starting from the canto that you have mentioned, Inferno 19, up until uh, Paradiso 29, and if we locate in this uh, long and articulated discourse uh, developed by Dante on the history of the church, we shall clearly see that, to put it very roughly, Dante believes that uh, the church uh, uh, of his time, late medieval church, is the outcome of a, a long process of degeneration from a sort of uh, perfection, apostolic perfection that characterized the origins of the church. And uh, Dante, locates in this, uh, or <clears throat> Dante believes that this degeneration started or uh, with the, the donation of Constantine and 
as a consequence, is the, the, the major outcome of uh, a specific vice, greed, mm -hmm. that affected uh, the uh, ecclesial hierarchies of, of the church, starting from the donation of Constantine. And Dante believes that in, in his time, in late medieval times, uh, this uh, degeneration has reached a peak, in a sense, uh, has reached uh, the, 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 the most uh, extreme outcomes. And in, if we locate Dante's uh, geography of St. Francis within this broader framework, we shall see that by um, proposing a reform of the church uh, uh, that pivots on uh, the sort of imitatio Christi, this going back to the uh, origins, the apostolic perfection, St. Francis, Francis stands there as uh, an exception within the context of late medieval church. We shall not uh, forget that uh, Paradiso 11 is the canto in which Dante uh, narrates the life of St. Francis, uh, or Thomas Aquinas narrates the life of St. Francis, but is also the canto in which uh, the, the <clears throat> corruption of, uh, of the order itself, founded by Francis, is, uh, is criticized. And this uh, idea to keep together on the one hand, the sort of a geographical perfection of uh, the founder, which was a saint, which is a saint. And on the other, the corruption of uh, the church made of men uh, is, uh, is, is a key to understand uh, the perspective that Dante want, wants us to adopt, uh, to consider Francis' life, uh, and uh, <clears throat> consequently, the ecclesiological importance of this this geography, in a sense, to put it very roughly, we shall say that, uh, uh, at least in my opinion, uh, within this broader view on uh, the history of the church uh, that Dante develops throughout the comedy, Francis stands there as a saint inspired by God that uh, is exceptional insofar as he manages to go back to the original perfection and uh, leaves in, but lives in, in a historical context in which he is isolated in doing so. And uh, so this, uh, this role in itself and uh, the afterlife of this role, insofar as it becomes a, an example to follow, as a, a strong political, uh, political power, given that the church is, according to Dante's political view, the, the institution that uh, is supposed to lead men and women to achieve the, the, the sort of happiness that coincides with the spiritual happiness, otherworldly happiness. And so uh, this role cannot be fulfilled by the church since the church is corrupted and so needs to be fulfilled the presence of such uh, an exceptional saint uh, as St. Francis indeed was in Dante's view to just achieve this, uh, this, this mission. And I believe that this is also the, the fact, sorry, the fact that uh, <laughs> the, 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 the generation of the church is uh, deeply linked to a specific vice, which is greed, gives us an insight to fully understand why Dante stresses uh, so much the importance of poverty to define the entire, the entire um, development of St. Francis' life and, uh, as a consequence, our image, the image of St. Francis that we perceive from Paradiso. Paradiso 11. And I would say that uh, this uh, uh, idea to put poverty at the very center of Francis' life is indeed something that can, came to Dante from the, the, the sort of geographical tradition of the 13th century. But I would say, or I would suggest that uh, in following this uh, idea, Dante goes even further by putting, uh, by, by recognizing poverty a centrality that is even more prominent that the one given by the other a geographer of, of St. Francis. And so, well, even though it is uh, almost a topos to just talk about St. Francis alongside with, uh, with poverty and to give la large space to poverty in texts about St. Francis, this idea to use uh, poverty and Francis' love to, to poverty, to define Francis' life is something that is very, very Dantean, even though this is not an invention 
by by Dante. I don't know if you if you have any views on that on the, the centrality of uh, of poverty in, in Dante's account of Saint Francis' life. Um, yes, I mean like. Uh, poverty is uh, at the center uh, of uh, Dante's representation of Francis because obviously, uh, <laughs> you know, it, poverty is the um, the virtue to fight against the anti-evangelical uh, vice of greed. Uh, but what interests uh, always interested me was how Dante managed to put poverty uh, at the center. I mean, as you said. Um, the uh, the agiographical tradition and in general the narrative tradition that had developed around you know some Francis had discussed poverty at large um but uh, but Dante does it in a very specific way and he does it in a very non-dantean way um that is by creating a, an allegorical love story between uh, Francis and uh, Lady Poverty. Dante is not very keen on personifications. As you know, like in uh, Vitanova, um, he, he spends a whole chapter trying to justify uh, and excuse himself for the use of the personification of the Lord of Love. And here we are at the height of, you know, like uh, Paradiso um, presenting the, the saint that uh, uh, was most uh, represented uh, um, in uh, the, uh, the 14th century uh, and the 13th century. Um, and who, who had attracted a wealth of, uh, let's say, realistic representations. Let's think of, you know, Giotto's uh, um, uh, frescoes. And um, and here we are then, you know, uh, um, facing uh, instead uh, the transformation of this uh, um, um, saint into, uh, of saint's life into a, a, an allegory, you know. Um, um, so the allegory, uh, the, the allegory of the mystical wedding between St. Francis and, uh, and poverty. And um, the reasons that uh, uh, that brought Dante to choose, uh, 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 you know, this literary conceit um, are obviously related to tradition. Uh, you know, earlier on, you you highlighted how this canto, in a way, is important to understand how Dante deals with the tradition, and the Franciscan tradition is certainly one of the heaviest traditions Dante had to deal with. Um, uh, uh, during his times. So there is no doubt that the main inspiration for the use of this literary conceit, um, the allegory of the mystical wedding, um, comes to Dante from, uh, for example, uh, the, the, the life of St. Francis Britain uh, by Bonaventure of Bagnoreggio. Um, you know, the, the, the the story of a love relationship between Francis and poverty is also at the center of another important Franciscan text that was written shortly after uh, the death of Francis, perhaps uh, uh, the sacred bond of St. Francis with Lady Poverty. Um, but it's interesting to note that uh, the only um, a real representation of a wedding. Uh, so not just, you know, a love uh, relationship or love encounter, but a proper wedding uh, between Francis and, uh, um, um, and poverty it is actually a visual. Uh, so it's uh, to be found in the upper, it's a fresco that's to be found in the upper Basilica of Assisi, uh, which is uh, usually attributed to Giotto and his school. Uh, whether Dante saw this fresco, um, we, we will never know. Um, uh, but um, uh, what is important to notice is once again that whilst, you know, Giotto and his school um, dedicated at least 28 fresco to, uh, to the life of uh, San Francis. Dante picks this just one motif, you know, the, the motif of the mystical wedding and, and uh, just transforms the entire life of Francis uh, into uh, the story of the relationship between uh, Francis and poverty. And um, the wedding becomes uh, the origin of the of the order the order is ultimately made up of the children of francis and um 
uh, and uh, and poverty itself. So the, the allegory transforms entirely uh, France's biography. I'd like to hear a little bit more about um, what you think of the use of the parabolic style, or better, the, the you know the exemplum as a, a way of um, narrating, you know, the perfect uh, Christian life um, and uh, set it within its uh, universal framework. Yes, we will indeed go back to the sort of love story between Francis and poetry because this uh, this feature, this theme is deeply intertwined to the, the sort of parabolical, parabolic mode of narration that Dante adopts in this canto. So yes, the two things are in, uh, in deeply intertwined. But to focus on the parabolic nature of Dante's narration, I would say something that is self-evident. We can define this canto a, a, a sort of poetic geography of St. Francis precisely because this narration adopts a parabolic sort of modern narration and a parabolic uh, aim, an exemplary aim. Francis stands there as a, an example of something and, and his life is, uh, as a consequence, a parable that narrates us in details um, the, the development of this sort of uh, uh, great life. Uh, and the narration itself is important because we can take inspiration from, from this narration to to just orientate our everyday, everyday behavior in a sense. So Francis, uh, the canto St. Francis stands be in, in between those two, those two aims. The one to provide a, a, a narration of an, an exceptional life, the life of a saint, that by definition is not the life of an everyman, is a saint, is an, ex an exceptional man. And on the other, the, the role that this narration has also to, to the everyday reader of, of the comedy, standing there as an example. And the, the link between the two is precisely the parabolic mode of narration and aims that Dante adopts to, to give shape to, to Francis' life in Paradiso, Paradiso 11. The love for poetry and the, this sort of love story that, that has a, a sort of biblical root in, in, in the Song of Songs, uh, which is the, the great biblical book about uh, love stories. And uh, uh, do you think, I mean, I would like to hear something from you about the evidences that we have to, to consider the Song of Songs, uh, not just a, a vague intertext of those, this canto, but a precise text uh, uh, that Dante used to shape Francis' life. Um, yeah, I mean, this, um, it was uh, our back quite a while uh, back now, in the, the past century, who brought to light the intertextual relationship between Paradiso 11 and the Song of Songs. And um, I think there is, you know, like a very striking ev evidence. There are several symptoms of Paradiso uh, 11 intertextual ties with uh, this Old Testament sensual love uh, story between a bride and a bridegroom. Uh, but the strongest uh, a point of contact is the eroticism of Dante's account. Um, I mean, Dante, uh, you know, is not an erotical poet. Um, I mean, you know, Eros is uh, um, is not uh, his way of talking about uh, about love. Um, uh, as we know, you know, he's the poet of uh, you know reason. Um, you know, that guides him to love. Uh, but indeed, again, uh, you know, uh, as it. it as um, we said uh, when we spoke about personification, um, you know, Dante doesn't like personification, and with Francis, he uses it. Um, Dante doesn't do a, a central um, poetry, but with Francis, he does it. To give you an example, uh, when Francis meets poverty, Dante tells us that he opened to her the door of pleasure. Uh, this is the most erotic scene of the entire comedy and uh, in general of Dante's um, uh, uh, lyric, um, uh, lyric 
lyrical writing, sorry. But if we look at the Song of Songs, we find that there is actually, in the in this biblical text, um, a, a very similar episode in which, you know, the bridegroom uh, who's left the bride uh, uh, um, alone uh, comes back. To, comes back home and knocks at the door and she opens the door and this constitutes the moment of the peak of her uh, illness, you know, of, of her love illness, of her sickness. This scene, which is very, very essential indeed, you know, we have almost an orgasmic, you know, reaction, um, is, uh, it was interpreted by the, uh, by the readers of the Bible as the moment in which um, the, the soul uh, or the church as a community of souls is liberated from the powers of evil. So if we look at uh, this particular moment in the love story, in the context of um, the biblical uh, uh, intertext, we understand that you know uh, Dante is trying to portray uh, uh, the, through these sensual uh, details uh, the the most uh, important spiritual aspects of Francis' life. That is uh, an imitation of. Um, of Christ who liberates the church and at the same time and um, a representation of the soul who's liberated from Christ uh, from sin through Christ mm -hmm. um, poverty is the image of Christ you know Dante portrays poverty very much like a, a Christ-like figure in the canto um, so we have here uh, in a way um it, a, a clear uh, sense of how Dante, uh, through the love paradigm of um, the Song of Song, has kind of re rethought, reshaped um, the not just the story of Francis, but of the medieval love lyric as a whole. Mm? Love is prefer is the preferred subject matter, but also the preferred form uh, of poetry, because love is for Dante the universal story of salvation, as the Song of Songs um, makes evident, you know, for uh, readers of, of the Bible. Um, and so, you know, like this is, you know, the the the, the choice of the allegory of love, of love is not essential just for putting poverty at the center, but also charity uh, at the center of France's uh, life. But um, as well as poverty and charity, I think Dante um, also um, makes sure in his very, you know, um, uh, linear and quite uh, uh, skinny <laughs> uh, life of, uh, of St. Francis, also makes sure to highlight another element which he finds fundamental uh, in the description of the perfect life. So uh, poverty, charity, and preaching. Uh, there's, you know, like yeah. one of the most important, you know, moments in uh, in this love story is when Francis leaves, you know, uh, um, the, the, the bride in order to, uh, you know, um, go and preach uh, in, the, uh, in the Orient. Um, you are an expert on Dante and, and preaching, so I'd like to hear what you make of this representation of, um, you know, Dante preaching to the Saladin. Yes, indeed, Paola, the, the, the role of preaching is central, even though Dante devotes to this uh, aspect of Francis' life no more than three lines uh, within this, uh, this canto. But I do believe that this stress on preaching is uh, central for at least one reason. We spoke about the, the role of church in uh, helping men and women to achieve the, the spiritual happiness and uh, indeed uh, the, the instrument that the church has to do so is preaching so as to to guide mankind to salvation and uh, uh, as a consequence Dante uh, in Paradiso 29 clearly says uh, criticize preachers because they are no longer able to fulfill this role of uh, of uh, pastor bonus that they are supposed to have for, uh, for mankind. And what I would like to stress is that the critique that Dante um, may 
makes in, um, in Paradiso 29 pivots around the idea that contemporary preachers, contemporary to Dante, so late medieval preachers, simply twisted around the, the sort of uh, uh, recommendation made by Christ himself to, to go and preach the Christ, so the, 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 the Vangelo, into a, a recommendation to uh, preach uh, what Dante calls chance, something that uh, is uh, um, explained by Dante himself in Paradiso 29 as a, a preaching focused on philosophical arguments, uh, philosophical topics uh, or debates and so on and so forth that does not stick to the biblical content that is supposed to, to give uh, the, the, the substance of any, any discourse de delivered by a preacher. And uh, this uh, is uh, important to understand Inferno, Inferno, sorry, Paradiso 11, because uh, Dante does refer not simply to uh, the, the <clears throat> French, Francis preaching in, in the Orient to convert the Muses, but he uses a very specific term. He says, and I shall quote in Italian, predicò Cristo. He preached the Christ, which is uh, exactly what contemporary preachers, late medieval preacher, according to Dante, did not do in favor of uh, preaching uh, philosophical arguments. So also in, in, his, uh, in his preaching, uh, Francis sticks to the apostolic perfection. And so he is uh, not just an example of uh, how we should behave be good Christians, but uh, he also managed to use the instruments available to the church to guide mankind to the achievement of spiritual happiness, i.e. preaching, as uh, they should be used, which means uh, as the apostle used it and not contemporary preaching. So also the, 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 the very few lines that Dante devotes to preaching uh, provides a, a portrait of Francis as someone who stands uh, out of the general corruption of his time and goes back to the um, apostolic perfection of, of, of preaching and, and so manage not just to live as uh, we should, but also to use uh, the instrument that we have to help the others as they should be used. And this is, uh, again, makes a complete sense in the context, the broader context of uh, Francis' life. And he stands there as another element that uh, forces us to consider the exceptionality of Francis as something that is indeed uh, deeply related to his sainthood, but also with the fact that he lives as an apostle, but in late medieval, late medieval Italy. And this is probably one of the centers. And the, the, the major achievement that uh, is uh, dependent uh, to a certain extent to his uh, marriage with, uh, with poverty. Thank you, uh, Nicolò, for this uh, lovely uh, discussion. As um, you know, it's, it has gone long on for longer than planned, but uh, uh, the discussion was very interesting. We learned a lot from you, and um, no, no, I learned a lot from you. So thank you, Paola. <laughs> this was a great conversation. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you and goodbye to everyone. We look forward to your comments uh, uh, in, on, uh, on YouTube. Thank you. Ciao. Ciao.